What is pleasure? The dictionary defines the word as a feeling of happy satisfaction and enjoyment. An event or activity from which one derives enjoyment or sensual gratification. And lastly, enjoyment and entertainment as opposed to necessity. Pleasure is based on your individual character, your likes and dislikes, your position in society and many other factors. In our consumerist society, we often think that happiness comes from the pleasures we take such as shopping, enhancing our bodies with makeup and piercings or tattoos, things that you can buy to make yourself feel good. But there is a difference between pleasure and happiness. Happiness comes from a place of being satisfied in all aspects of your life, feeling balanced and clear-headed for a long period of time, being in tune with nature and helping others. Unfortunately, the complexities of life often get in the way of true happiness, and so we must work around them. This leads us to seek out pleasure to try and regain some of those nice feelings that we should be receiving from general happiness. The issue is, the reward you get from pleasure is often erratic because it's such a personal metric to measure things against. You can't say that eating your favourite meal or watching your favourite movie will always improve your feeling of happiness by a set amount. In this video, we are going to explore different themes surrounding pleasure, satisfaction and happiness. Every satisfaction he attains lays the seeds of some new desire, so that there is no end to the wishes of each individual will. Have you ever wondered why many religions have rules in place to try and conquer desires within people? No sex before marriage, do not covet riches, don't be jealous of your neighbour, don't murder, don't be greedy. At the time when the written word came into common use, most major religions had been around for hundreds of years. Across those centuries, the patterns of human behaviour didn't change and they still haven't changed. We desire material pleasures because they give us, often, instant gratification. They push all the right buttons in our brains and release the hit of adrenaline or dopamine that makes us feel excited and happy temporarily. As Schopenhauer states, when one desire is fulfilled, another will take its place. There will not be an end to your wanting, and this is what drives addictions and mental health issues. You will never be 100% satisfied if you choose to only follow the desires that you crave. Although Schopenhauer may appear to be pessimistic, his views on the human struggle do make sense, mainly his thoughts around the will to live. He explains that animals may live happier lives than humans because their lifestyle experiences less negativity on a daily basis. He suggests that we should not judge happiness by how much pleasure we can seek through human bodily desires, but in fact, we should measure a happy life on the existence or non-existence of pain. Happiness of any given life is to be measured not by its joys and pleasures, but by the extent to which it has been free from suffering from positive evil. To be free from positive evil is not as basic as it may seem. In a world where you are bombarded with advertising and a million social and personal standards, it's nearly impossible to ignore the tempting call of quick pleasures. Not only do alcohol and drugs feature on the list of desires, we are already programmed to procreate and extend the human race. Our bodies naturally get pulled towards cosmetic beauty, aesthetically pleasing people and objects. We are like magpies. We can't help but be impressed with the glittering, shiny world of trinkets and snack food that we live in. Consumerism traps you because then you have to work harder and longer to get what you want or what you think you need to be happy. In actual fact, it's the things that you don't think about which could be the key to prolonged happiness and a life with less positive evil in it.
Because as teenagers and adults, we are constantly in a cycle of needing to do things for other people before we can obtain our own reward, we tend to self-soothe the moments in between by purchasing things that are advertised to us or making impulsive decisions to go out and have a crazy time with our friends. Anything we can do to numb the underlying pain and fear of existence. Even if you're reading this thinking, I don't go clubbing or recklessly drink in bars, or I don't get fooled by advertising, I do what I want. Ask yourself honestly, what do you want? What do you want in your soul? And do you even know what true happiness is? These questions are not intended to upset you or cast out a cloud of depression. It's just highlighting the fact that most people, even spiritual people, are tempted by the desire for pleasure because the world in which we live in is geared to ignite many fires within you, many hopes and dreams. Yet, when you can't fulfil them, or times get tough, the very same society will give you short-term easy fixes to medicate you and lull you into a false, short-lived state of happiness. If you want to be truly happy, you need to work out what you want for yourself and then build on daily practices that will help you reach that destination. Mindset and being able to see the bigger picture will be your shield from societal pressure. Human behaviour flows from three main sources, desire, emotion and knowledge. Recognise that you have a desire or want. Acknowledge the emotions attached to it and take a moment to think about your actions. Use the best of your knowledge to either follow through with a desire or decline it. In this way, you can start to build integrity and stability. Buddhists tell us that the moment we start to think about something we want, that we desire, we create a feeling of debt within ourselves. We suddenly feel that we are lacking a vital part of us, when moments before we were perfectly content. This feeling of longing and lament disturbs our daily rhythm of life, and things that once seemed fine or okay can start to agitate you or make you feel jealous especially if one of the people you know has the exact same material object or opportunity that you are lusting after. The usual solution for this situation is that we simply get what we want. We want a new phone or a new pair of shoes, we buy them. If we want sexual gratification or to feel numb, we can achieve this with little or no effort. If we want something larger, say a better house or an expensive holiday, the desire is so strong that we will work overtime at our jobs or maybe even consider fraud as a means to get our heart's desire. We have to pay off the debt within us somehow. But do we want these things or do we simply want the feeling of desire and painful longing to end? Consider this also. Once you have your new object or you have attained your new state of life, the pain will not stop. It will simply change. Suppose we came to possess a very expensive object. The minute that thing comes into our possession, our mind changes. Now, where can I keep it? If I leave it there, somebody might steal it. We worry ourselves into a state, trying to find a place to keep it. And when did the mind change? It changed the minute we obtained that object. Suffering arose right then. No matter where we leave that object, we can't relax, so we're left with trouble. Whether sitting, walking or lying down, we are lost in worry. So what is the solution to avoiding or ignoring our desire to become truly, deeply happy? It seems that we are in a world that has a framework to fan the flames and encourages us to buy more and more and be woefully unhappy unless we follow the herd. One extreme solution would be to remove yourself from normal society and avoid any of the desires for pleasure. This is often seen with Christian monks in a monastery or nuns in a convent 
who hide themselves away to be devoted to God in a simple, humble life. Yet, if everyone did that, the world wouldn't be able to function because we would still need people to run the train network, teach in schools, clean the streets, provide food, and also a little entertainment like music and beautiful gardens. Removing yourself doesn't solve the desires that are inbuilt within the human psyche. Another issue with denying yourself desire and trying to struggle against your human nature is that you are fighting your very will to live. Arthur Schopenhauer established that the will to live or the will to survive is extreme and it drives everything. So, although you may have conquered what you believe are the common human desires for pleasure, your body will still be sending signals to you, both mentally and physically, telling you that you must survive. And to do that, you can begin to think irrationally and even send yourself crazy. Is there another solution? Yes. Something that we can all partake in is moderation. We know that if you go to either extreme, follow your desires constantly or deny them constantly, this is not practical and both of these can cause mental health issues such as anxiety, depression and even death in certain cases. So, instead of all or nothing, you should be measured in your approach. Be aware of what you're doing and why you're driven to do it. Epicureanism is based on the teaching of ancient Greek philosopher Epicurus. The core of his reasoning was that we need to work out what are our natural desires and what are unnatural. For example, wanting a nice, safe place to live is a natural desire. Seeking out good food and firm friendship is also natural. We are social creatures after all. These natural desires should be treated with moderation because although they are natural and feel essential, we can actually survive and exist with less. The worst desires, the ones we should monitor and try to avoid, are called vain desires. Extreme wealth, fame and excessive power are neither natural or necessary. Following these means that you're excluding your fellow humans and wanting a selfish outcome above all others. This is more likely to cause you and the people around you harm. Greed, power and manipulation are the traits of vain desires and they serve no purpose. The wealth required by nature is limited and easy to procure, but the wealth required by vain ideals extends to infinity, meaning that you can easily be satisfied when it comes to natural or necessary desires like finding a good meal, getting a good night's sleep, enjoying a sunset on the beach. But when you seek something like fame, you will always be struggling and striving to reach what you feel is the pinnacle of fame. And then you will have to maintain that at a high personal cost. If you have enjoyed this video and you're inspired by what you've seen, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Let's change the world together.